The start of the catfish breeding process begins with selection of broodstock. In order to select the broodstock, we need to drain the tank in which the broodstock are living. In this instance, you can see our fish farmer, Gedu, is perched on a plank over the tank and is removing the upstand pipe in order to be able to drain the water out of the tank so that he can get to the broodstock in the tank. Once the tank is drained, we are able to work through the broodstock looking for suitable fish that look like they are ready to spawn. The females should have a plump belly and their genital paw is swollen. If the males are sexually mature, they should be ready to spawn under the same conditions that the females are ready to spawn. In other words, if you have a tank of broodstock and the females are ready to spawn, the males will be ready to spawn as well. Males are easy to distinguish from the females because the male has a genital papillae, whereas the female has a genital paw. Females also tend to be stouter than the males. Work through the broodstock to find females that have plump, soft bellies. These females are then placed individually in cages. Only select sufficient females according to what you require for your breeding purposes. The female needs to be weighed individually so that we know firstly how many eggs to expect according to the body mass of the female and secondly we know how much aquaspawn needs to be administered to that female. Aquaspawn is an artificial hormone identical to the natural hormone that the catfish release when they are ready to spawn. Having weighed the female we inject aquaspawn into her back muscle at a dosage of half a milliliter per kilogram of her body mass. Depending on the temperature of the water in which we keep her after injecting the aquaspawn, we can see from the latency table how long it will take for her eggs to mature. For instance, if the water temperature is 25 degrees, the eggs will be ready to be released by the female in about 11 hours whereas at 28 degrees it will only take seven and a half hours. Prior to injecting the female we need to prepare a smooth surface on which to work. The surface must be kept damp throughout the entire time that we are working with the female so as not to damage the slime layer on the female's body. Bring the female over in the net or in the cage, place the cage on the surface Open the cage carefully and place a wet towel over the eyes of the female. This has a calming effect. You can now work with the female without her kicking around, as such kicking around could result in her being harmed. The working surface should be at a comfortable height so that it is convenient for the operators who are working on this fish. Draw up the appropriate amount of aquaspawn into a fine needle. Normally we use about a 1 milliliter needle, but you can use a needle of up to 5 milliliters. Insert the needle completely into the body of the female at an angle of about 45 degrees, pointing forwards. Squeeze slowly and evenly on the plunger so that the aquaspawn is slowly introduced into the body of the fish. After every milliliter or so, remove the needle Gently rub the spot where the needle entered the body and then insert the needle elsewhere and repeat the exercise. Note the angle of the needle and note that the gradations are on the top of the needle so that the operator can see clearly exactly how much to inject into that female. We generally don't inject into male catfish because if a female is ready to spawn the male will be ready already and although the females require the hormone to get the eggs to be finally matured and released the males do not normally require this. Once we have injected the female her cage is then closed up again and the cage is hung in a tank of water overnight until she is ready to release her eggs. Be sure to put only one female per cage. There can be multiple female cages per tank but only one female per cage because if they can get to each other they will kill each other overnight. They become extremely aggressive once they have been injected with hormones. Secure the lid on the tank or close the cage very carefully to make sure that the female cannot escape overnight. According to the latency table and the water temperature in which the female is kept we know how long it will take for those eggs to be released we start checking the female about an hour before we expect the eggs to be released. Each time we lift her out of the water, 
and see if just with her body weight eggs are released from her vent. If no eggs are released we gently apply pressure to her body which should then result in eggs being released from her vent. If eggs are still not released return her to the cage for another half an hour or so. If eggs are released return her to the cage again but now we know that we are ready for the next step which involves preparing the male. In this slide you can clearly see the eggs being released from the vent of the female just with the slightest amount of pressure. Note the eggs on the cage itself. To prepare the male we lift his cage out of the tank, place it on a surface at a convenient height, open the cage up and then place a damp cloth over his eyes to calm him down. A very sharp chisel of about one centimeter width is placed immediately behind his skull and above his spine. A single swift blow of a hammer results in the chisel cutting through the spine and instantly killing the male catfish. Note the position where the chisel is placed immediately behind the hard skull of the catfish. Next we need to dissect the male, a sharp knife into his vent and cutting forwards along his belly line towards the gills. By opening up his belly cavity in this way, we are able to access the sperm. Unfortunately, male catfish do not produce enough sperm for us to be able to milk them as we milk the eggs from the female. Instead, we have to kill the male, cut him open and actually surgically remove the testes from his belly. It is important to always use sperm from at least two male catfish so that we ensure that there will be a high fertilization rate of the eggs. Eggs from only one catfish female is perfectly acceptable provided that there are sufficient quantity of eggs according to our requirement. In this slide you can see the hammock used for the female catfish. This is only generally used with large female catfish. The small females can be held in one's hand. Place the female catfish into the hammock with her vent immediately over the opening. Keep the damp cloth across her eyes at all times. The hammock needs to be damp when we place the female into it, but not dripping with water. Place the female into the hammock so that her vent is immediately over the opening in the base of the hammock. Close off the back portion of the hammock with a safety pin so that she doesn't fall out when later on we lift the front portion of the hammock to release the eggs. We now hang the hammock back onto its frame with the vent of the female showing through the opening in the hammock. Position a dry bowl below the female's vent to catch the eggs. Gentle pressure onto the female's abdomen will result in the release of eggs. This particular female is not releasing very many eggs, only about 10% of what is normally expected for such a large female. But just gentle pressure is all that is needed to release those eggs. You'll need to carry on massaging the female for about a minute to get all the eggs out. Ensure that at all times you are gentle with the female and once she is no longer freely releasing eggs, be sure to stop trying to milk her. In this video you can see the hands of the operator inside the hammock just applying gentle pressure to her belly massaging the eggs out of her. Once we have finished milking the female, we then record the weight of the eggs. The next step is to cut the testes out of the male and wash them in a bowl of clean water. After washing the testes, we dry them off on a towel as we don't want the eggs coming into contact with any water at this stage. Hold the testes over the eggs and cut the membrane of the testy with a sharp blade to release the sperm onto the eggs. The testy will normally need to be cut in a number of different places to release a significant amount of sperm. Once again I remind you it's very important to use the testes of more than one male. If one male is slightly less fertile, the high fertility of the other male will ensure good hatching. This slide shows us eggs that have not yet come into contact with the sperm. Note the brownish greenish color of catfish eggs. Here you can see the white sperm has been placed on top of the eggs ready for mixing. 
At this point we mix the eggs and the sperm with a gentle instrument such as a feather or a soft spoon. After a few seconds of mixing, an equal volume of water is added to the eggs. Prior to adding water to the eggs, fertilization does not occur as water is essential in this process. Once we add the water, two things happen. Firstly, the eggs start swelling and allowing a single sperm to enter each egg for fertilization. Once the sperm has entered the egg, the hole called a micropile through which the sperm enters closes preventing further sperm from entering that egg. That fertilized egg then carries on expanding and expanding and expanding and while it is swelling starts to become sticky so that it's ready to attach to the substrate. Therefore we need to start working quickly at this stage as we've got about a minute in which to work before the eggs become too sticky for them to be useful. The next step is therefore to spread these eggs very gently out onto incubation trays. These incubation trays are made of fine cloth that is too fine for the eggs to fall through. Spread the eggs out so that there's no more than a single layer of eggs at any point across the cloth. This particular farmer is using water to spread the eggs. Most people use a paintbrush or even a feather. Note that the eggs are sticking to the incubator tray. The incubator tray is then placed vertically in an incubation tank. You can see that in this case there are two trays adjacent to each other with about five centimeters space between them. You can also notice that some eggs have drifted off the cloth onto the surface of the water. Many of these eggs will not be lost but will still hatch absolutely fine. Here you can see eggs on the incubator frame and for scale you can see eggs on my finger. Once we have placed all the eggs onto the incubator trays and all the trays have been placed into the incubator tank, we then cover the tank to exclude light as catfish eggs and fry are light sensitive. This slide shows those same eggs 24 hours later when they are starting to hatch. Note, particularly towards the top end of the video, you can see some of the eggs are clear. Those are eggs that have already hatched. In between, you can see brown dirt that has settled on the eggs. And in between that, you can see little eggs that have started to hatch as fry. These fry move continuously and move in a downward direction so that they settle onto the floor of the tank. They avoid light and consequently move to the dark corners of the tank. These fry that have hatched can clearly be seen to be moving around very vigorously. But note the large size of the green yolk sac that they are still absorbing and consequently they aren't able to swim very well. At this point they are living off their yolk sac and don't start eating until the following day. These fry are extremely sensitive and should not be handled under any circumstances at this stage. Because the fry are so active, it is important to keep the outlet of the fry tank screened with a fine mesh to prevent the fry being lost with the water leaving the tank. The following day the fry will be ready for their first meal. Even though they are still absorbing their yolk sac, they are now able to eat finely newly hatched brine shrimp. We add the newly hatched brine shrimp to the tank, spreading it around away from the outlet pipe. One of the advantages of brine shrimp is that it will remain alive in the water for several hours until it is eaten by the catfish. It is also highly nutritious and therefore the main food that we give them for the first week to 10 days. Acknowledgement and special thanks for their assistance in the making of this video go to Hidu Kraus and Samuel Yankis. Thank you very much, gentlemen.